Greetings, friends. Welcome to the Ask Me Anything episode of the Smart Couple podcast. Today's question is from Nathan from Ashland, Oregon. And he's, you'll hear the question, but he's asking me kind of a three part question about being 21 and doing relationship with technology and how do I be true to myself in this society and also find a good partner. So I think you're going to enjoy this one and let's get right into it. Welcome to the Smart Couple Show, all right, where we answer your questions about intimacy, sex, and relationship. It takes quite a special person to deal with you if they get in a relationship with you because you're, like me, challenging to deal with. You're a lot to handle. And you might think you're not, uh, but all we have to do is move in together, okay, and spend some time together. And ye, we're going to find out how hard it is to be together, <laughs> okay? So the Smart Couple Show here is aimed to give you tools that work in long-term partnership because it's uh, challenging, yeah. Yeah, I hope you had a great holiday as well, Celia, Cecilia, and uh, hopefully you guys got through the family drama okay. All right, let me pull up our first question here. So again, context, we're going to meet weekly here at 10 a.m. Mountain Time every week to answer your questions. You can ask me anything relational here. And uh, my plan is to, because I have this backlog of questions I want to answer, is to answer those questions. And you're welcome to ask me other questions here, but I probably won't get to them uh, during this time because it's between 5 and 15 minutes because I want to keep these short and to the point. All right. So let's hear from uh, Nathan. Okay, essentially the context of Nathan's question, I've listened to this once. He's 21, and he's asking about relationship advice for young people. And he's got three really important questions here that pertain to adults, really, of any age. So let me turn up the volume so you can get Nathan's question here. Hey, Jason. My name's Nathan. I'm from Ashland, Oregon. Uh, So uh, I'm 21. I was wondering if you could make a segment aimed at the modern adolescents, like their late teens to early 20s. So that's the kind of frames that have my questions in mind. So my first question is, how do you navigate technology in relationships? Like, when is it connecting? When is it disconnecting? As phones and technological tools are more necessities, how do you use them from a place of strength? Are there- okay. That's the first part of his question. I'm going to play the next part here in a minute. So Nathan from Ashland, Oregon. What's up, man? Thank you for your question here. He's wanting relationship advice for young people who are on technology a lot. And how do we navigate, how do we navigate that? And um, this is, you know, texting and emailing, but particularly texting, instant messaging, uh, Snapchatting are all great tools to connect. And people break up over texts and people get in fights on text messaging. And I never recommend that. I don't care how old you are. Um, Fighting via text, not going to go over usually well. Because why? Because the way we're wired to connect is through eyes and through touch and being physically present with one another. So... If you're not in a long distance relationship and you happen to live close by, hold off on trying to work it out until you're live in person with each other. It's just not a good idea to try to fight and work shit out over text. Um, Some people can do it, uh, but just because you've had a couple successes there doesn't mean it's a good approach, all right? Uh, And again, because of eye contact, physical proximity and closeness, all the attachment-based rules of thumb, I guess you could call it, are essential here. 
and I never fight with my wife over text. We never work anything out over text or email. It's all done face-to-face -face in person. So I would set some boundaries. I would texting text all day long if you want, but the moment it gets challenging, you got to take it offline. And also texting provides a little barrier where we can feel a little safe, like, ooh, I can say something a little more honest if it's texting versus if I tell you to your face. Uh, that's a good, that's fine if that's where you're at and work to the next step, which is to get in a person's face, sitting across from them like we are now, um, but in person and just say, honey, I'm really scared to share this. Here's what's up for me. Um, or I love you. And I've been scared to say how much I freaking care about you and how afraid I am to lose you. Say that in person, you know, um, say what you want in the relationship in person, set up do's and don'ts and agreements in your own relationship in person. Right? So texting, use it for what it's for, which is to, you know, communicate quick, quickly and efficiently, uh, throughout your busy day and to get little hits of appreciation from your partner, uh, someone you care about. Uh, that's awesome. Use it for that, but it's limited. Okay. So I, and I think young people are facing this more and more, but, but here's the thing, uh, Nathan, nothing can replace human contact in person and nothing will ever replace that. Uh, no matter how excellent we get at technology and virtual reality and whatever's coming next, uh, with artificial intelligence and everything, uh, nothing can beat sitting face to face across from each other at all. So that's always going to win. Uh, in terms of our heart and what we really long for. So go after that. You know what I'm saying? Okay, second part to Nathan's question. Your question is uh, in like a young, early stage of life, how do you determine what is really your authentic self and not just a reflection of external influences, which could be anything from hormones to parents? Uh, oh, and also. Okay. So his second part of his question, again, for this is for young people, but definitely can apply to us older folk, is how do we not basically conform and subordinate to what other people want us to be in life? How do we find our authentic voice and truth as we go, especially if we're 21 and the, it's just crowded with noise around who we should be, how we should be, um, et cetera. And we need to develop practices, Nathan, that, that find out who you are on the inside. So traveling, I love for kids uh, age 21 and younger, a little bit older, um, traveling the world, going to places where you're out of your comfort zone and you have to come face to face with yourself. I did a couple of those journeys in my 20s and they were essential for me. I moved across the country. I worked in places where I didn't know anyone um, I hitchhiked across countries. I backpacked with just a little school size backpack to through Central America um, to find out who I was. And it turns out I found out some things I didn't like about myself. And that was really good information for me because um, I wanted to get away from all that noise, right? But there's, there's gems in the noise, but we have to learn to find out who we are and trust ourselves. And we only do that through uh, experience. So go have big experiences. I'm not a big fan of college these days or school in general for kids um, because it's, unless you want to go work for someone else or you're certain about what you want to be when you grow up, then your education is going to serve a function. That's great. Uh, but for uh, slightly more free thinking individuals, perhaps like yourself, um, you got to be true to you and go find out who you are. And again, life experience is going to teach you that, you know? Okay, next part of your question, and then we'll sum it up. Much of your posts are about people already in relationships. I don't know if you would offer any advice on how to form new relationships or your first relationship or how to identify people you want to bring in or keep in your life and navigate all these changing things as you grow and approach these issues from a place of courage and authenticity. Thanks. Okay. First of all, I love that you're 21 and you're asking these questions, Nathan. It's really demonstrates the maturity you're at. 
And my guess is it's probably challenging for you to relate to a lot of 21 year olds who are, you know, just about partying, uh, getting high, getting fucked up, um, getting laid, whatever they're into. And you're probably wanting more than that. I was in that stage. I was kind of stuck around, but I knew some deeper part of me knew I was like, really, is this it? Which is why I ate acid. Cause I was like, I want something deeper. Um, that's why I went out in nature. So most 21 year olds are really self-absorbed and wanting to, it's like, what is life going to give me? Um, you strike me as a person is that's going to be asking the question, like, what can I contribute to life? How can I serve? What problem can I solve in life? And that's the entrepreneurial mindset, but it's also the mindset of people who uh, find awesome friendships and relationships because it's how can I help someone else as opposed to what's the world going to give me, which is the entitled 21-year-old stance. So uh, I would think a lot of uh, young people your age are not asking these questions. So I would encourage you to go find, which is a really important question, go find people that you can connect with and they might be 25 and 30. Um, they just might be more mature uh, than the folks your age. So this is essential because a lot of us hang around friends that hold us back and family members that keep us playing small and stuck in our little worldview and our limited paradigm. So try to find people that are gonna push you and challenge you to think outside the box, to think differently, to understand humans and human behavior. Um, and again, the, the personal growth development oriented person in general is going to find a better relationship because they're working on themselves. They're looking in the mirror and they are willing to own their shit and say, oops, I made a mistake, honey. I fucked up there. Um, gosh, I feel really scared and insecure here about the relationship. That kind of person generally has a better relationship because it's just more... <laughs> more mature and honest and versus protecting and blaming and uh, you know holding out and all the games that people play in a more immature relationship so that's what I would say to you and then kind of encapsulating your question which is I just again appreciate young adults and adolescents take notes from Nathan here and even risk asking these kind of questions how do I deal with technology in a relationship? How do I deal with all the mixed messages I'm getting about who I should be in my life? And how do I deal with finding someone that I vibe with and that I want to spend a good chunk of my life with? How do I do that? 21 year olds that are asking that question are way ahead of the game. So I just applaud you and appreciate you for being courageous enough to to look in the mirror and, and ask those questions to us. So you're serving us a lot with the questions. Thanks, man. Yeah. And again, I'm in the business of teaching people relationship, the class they never got in school. Like Nathan in college here is not getting a class on intimacy and long-term relationship or how to deal with conflict at work. But these are the most essential skills in my opinion that we can learn on the planet. And that's why I want you to come keep visiting here week in and week out this year of 2017 because just by listening, your relationships are going to improve. Now, if you want to take the next step, then you go to jasongaddis.com slash roots and you apply to the Roots community, which is the foundational community of the relationship school, and you start learning. You start getting honest and learning about intimacy and you start to address your fears and uh, what holds you back from the kind of relationship that you want. Because look, comp relationship is complicated. No pun intended with the Facebook status. It's complicated. It's always complicated. And, but if you're smart and you have tools, it takes the complication and it turns it into just basic like, oh, this is how human beings operate. This is how relationships actually work. And it's very satisfying when you start to learn how. Uh, when you're not learning how, it's just exceptionally frustrating and you either blame yourself or you blame someone else. And then you're stuck in your victim seat and no one can really help you out there. Okay, there you have it. Thank you for joining me on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, iTunes, wherever you're joining me from. Go to jasongaddis.com slash roots if you want to take a deeper slice and really learn the relationship skills that you need to make it not complicated. All right. Uh, it's already so complicated. 
And why not make it a little easier on yourself by learning how to do this thing called intimacy and partnership. Okay, and we'll see you next time.